Hi, everybody. My name is Alex Novleski, and I'm the team lead for CMG's Consulting Support and Training Department out of Calgary. Today, I'm going to be going over modeling flow through faults using DFN. To begin with, I'll do a little bit of a background on fractured reservoir modeling, which is typically used for modeling um, fluid throw, flow through dual continuous systems. With fractured reservoirs, typically we can divide the reservoir into two main components, the matrix and the natural fractures. With the matrix, this is typically our rock portion, which would have typically a high porosity and a low permeability associated with it in many fractured reservoirs. With the natural fractures, these can be anything from microscopic fissures to large fracture corridors. When we're looking at faulted fluid flow, typically we're looking at more of these large fracture corridors. In comparison with the matrix, the fractures would have low porosity or a low pore volume associated with them and a relatively high permeability. This allows for quick fluid flow um, without a lot of accumulation in the fractures. The traditional way of modeling this would be through a dual continuous system. Um, and we've got a variety of different methods that we can use within CMG to model these dual, dual continuous system. This can be the dual porosity method, dual permeability, uh, MINK, which is multiple interacting continua, as well as subdomain methods. Each of these has um, a different area that they work better in and has a, a few different unique characteristics associated with each. When we're modeling these types of systems, they're implicitly modeling the fractures. So we're not actually modeling any specific fractures, but typically the fracture system over a given area or a different or a given block volume. Um, if we wanted to model these fractures explicitly and actually calculate the flow within one particular fracture, this is where GFN would come in um, and we'd be able to actually track that movement throughout that fracture, which may extend across multiple grid blocks or multiple regions in the reservoir. So next we'll discuss a little bit on DFN. A DFN is a mathematical representation of fracture characteristics for hydraulically relevant fractures. So anywhere where we have fractures with enough fluid flow, we can model these using DFNs. These model the fracture conduit in a faulted, as well as naturally or hydraulically fractured reservoirs. So here in the images we can see uh, multiple planes, and each of these planes might be a different unit in a discrete fracture network. In comparison with the dual continuum approach, which I previously described, DFNs allow for us to model distinctive, complex, disconnected, as well as large scale fractures. Each of these fractures can have an arbitrary orientation, um, so we can really tilt them in whatever direction we want. And the fractures will intercept the matrix grid uh, and introduce segment control volumes wherever the DFN intersects with that grid. These segments will be directly connected with the underlying matrix blocks. And DFNs can also work with local grid refinement as well as dual continuum models. So if we're looking at faulted reservoirs, we can include these DFNs separate from maybe natural fractures in these um, faulted reservoirs. This will sort of all work together in sort of a triple porosity system. So when looking at the DFNs, they can be divided into different um, portions or segments. So the DFN will be all the fractures associated with a fracture network. Within that fracture set network, we might have different units associated with that. So here we have two discrete fracture units that make up a discrete fracture network. Each of those discrete fracture units can have its own properties associated with it. So it might have different permeabilities, different apertures, different compressibilities. And then everywhere where each of those discrete fracture units intersects the reservoir grid, that will be further subdivided into discrete fracture segments. These are sort of the discrete units where we're calculating flow between each of these um, when calculating flow through the um, discrete fracture network. 
So by using these methods, we can use these to model a variety of different um, fracture systems. So anything from uh, natural fracture modeling, flow through faults, which is the focus of this presentation, or we might want to model unpropped fractures around primary hydraulic fractures. So next we'll look at the different formats that we can use to import these fracture networks. There's a variety of different softwares that are able to export DFN files to CMG. Uh, these include GoCAD, FRACMAN, as well as Petrel. And when importing these, um, there's an advanced DFN import available in Builder. And we'll import each of the X, Y, and Z coordinates associated with each DFU. And this allows for non-uniform DFN imports. So each of these different DFUs can have their own coordinate system or coordinates associated with them. And they can also have unique permeability and aperture associated with each of them. This allows us to have different properties associated with different fractures. There's also multiple different file formats that we can import these files into. Uh, these include the TS format as well as the FAB file format. And each of these files will contain one set of DFN networks, but potentially multiple DFUs or multiple fractures per DFN. The primary properties that we would associate with the fractures that we would import would be the permeability, aperture, and compressibility. However, if we wanted to modify other properties associated with the fractures, we can also do that. So for example, we can define different relative permeability sets per fracture or per fracture network. We may want to initialize the fractures with different properties. So there's a variety of different properties that we can associate with the fractures and we can overwrite their properties for. Um, we can apply all these, the same property to all the fractures in the network, or we can have an array of properties which allow us to define different properties per fracture. These properties can also be modified recurrently depending on the property. So next I'll go through a demo and we'll see how we can add in um, a discrete fracture network to be able to model uh, flow through the faults. So I have a file opened in Builder, um, and you can see that there's quite a few faults um, throughout the model. Um, and we want to be able to model uh, enhanced fluid flow along these faults. At one end of the reservoir, we have an injector well, um, and the operator was finding that they were having uh, early breakthrough in some of the wells further along in the reservoir, um, which seemed much earlier than we would expect if there was only fluid flow through the matrix. So what we want to see in this model is if we add in the discrete fracture network to um, allow enhanced flow along the faults, if we can see that earlier breakthrough time um, in those further wells. So what I'm going to do first to add in the discrete fracture network is I'll go to reservoir and I'll select the option import discrete fracture networks. And we'll click on the file path to be able to browse for my import file. So from a third party package, we've exported a discrete fracture network um, that includes the fractures or the faults that go through this model. And we've assigned a permeability associated with each of those faults as well. So click OK, and then we'll click OK to import that. And if we wanted, we could also import multiple files simultaneously. So my file has been imported successfully. And now let's switch this over to a property to be able to see the uh, discrete fracture network. So we'll change this to DFN permeability. And now I can see in my model um, all the DFNs associated with the fractures along this vaulted system. So we can see some of them are intersecting each other where some of the faults um, intersect. So now I've got my model set up um, and we can see if this discrete fracture network allows us to see improved flow. Another thing that I've also set up in this model beforehand is tracers so I can track the fluid flow from the injector through the model. 
So I've already run this model, so I'll switch over into results and we can see that fluid flow. So right now the property that I'm displaying is the tracer concentration. And what we can see is um, we've started some injection around the bell. And then what we should see is as this plume expands outwards towards outwards from the injector well, we'll see that it reaches the, um, the faulted sections and we'll see if we have improved flow through those faults. So we'll just start the animation now. And we can see that plume is starting to grow and reaching towards some of the faulted sections. So now we can see it sort of intersected with that fault and we can start to see some movement along the faults or we're sort of getting um, quicker fluid movement. So as it reaches some of the other faults that are intersecting, it will also move along those. So we can maybe also look at some of the um, 2D plots and maybe we'll look at the wind breakthrough occurs on well number 19 um, in one of those plots. So I'll switch over to time series. And I'll look at well number 19. And we'll look at the cumulative tracer that's reached that well. So here we can see um, in a, at around 2014, we're starting to see breakthrough from that well, um, which matches a little bit better to what the operator was seeing in reality. So thank you for attending my demo on um, modeling flow through faults using DFN. Um, if you like our videos, please make sure to subscribe as well as hit the like button um, on each of our videos. Thank you for attending.